Feel Good Friday to you, my friends. It's so good to see you guys. Been checking out the comment section going on over here on YouTube. And let's see, somebody was fighting a spider. I'm going to roll back here to see who it was. I think it was Gloria. Was it Gloria? Let's go back. <laughs> it was Gloria. Gloria is fighting a spider currently. I hope that she wins the battle. <laughs> If nobody hears from Gloria, the spider won. Okay. I'm just saying, just saying, Hey, yeah. Facebook's in the house now. Hi everybody. Hi Ruby. Hi Tracy. Hi Brenda, Debbie, Patty, both Patties. Hi everybody. <laughs> oh my goodness. Patty, Patty screaming my name. <laughs> capitals. She's using capitals. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Vanessa. Oh, my goodness. You guys, it's Friday. I'm so excited. I'm so, hey, there's Kathy. I'm so excited. Feel Good Friday is always my favorite day of the week. I know I say it all the time, but I got to tell you, like, this is an exceptional Friday because I have three lives today, which I know that by the end of the third live, I'm going to be completely exhausted. Um, but it's still exciting. So we have our feel good Friday live here. Then over in hardwired, we have a hardwired live at 4 PM with a special guest. Danielle Wicks is joining us for a seed bead party. And then at 7 PM Eastern time, I'm going to be over on Sam's bead shops, Facebook page, doing a class using the new, uh, using the new Sam's bead box for May. Super excited. I'm doing a really easy but really cool bracelet and earrings set over there. So if you have not set a reminder for that, you definitely want to do that to be sure that you don't miss uh, the live with Sam. It's always fun. Gloria says she did not find it. Okay, Gloria, that that's this kind of thing that keeps me up at night, right? Like it's right before bed and you go and you're like, there's a spider on the wall and you, you, you swat at it. You throw some like and then the spider disappears. These are the things that keep me up all night. Like you won't sleep tonight. You won't sleep until you find that spider. <laughs> but I'm glad you checked in because now we know that the, at least the spider has not won yet. <laughs> right? Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. And then not only do I have a live, so I have the three lives today, but I also have a Michael's class tomorrow. So be sure that if you don't have anything planned for your Saturday and you want a little extra time with me, which I don't know why you would, but I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you. Um, please come over and check out my Michael's class as well. That's over on the Michael's website. Those classes are always free. And if you can't catch it live, you can always watch the replay. They upload to the Michael's YouTube channel 24 to 48 hours after the fact. Um, and definitely more on the 48 hour time frame when it comes to the weekends, because there's nobody there on Saturdays. So, um, it usually comes up on like Monday or Tuesday when it comes to Saturday classes with Michaels. Um, let's see anything else I got going on. So there are actually a couple other things going on. First and foremost, can we all just stop for a second? Stop for a second. So I know you guys know that like my team means everything to me. Kathy, Colleen, and Nicole. Those are, they're not only are they like my team, but those are like my besties. Like those three beautiful souls are my besties. They really, really are. They know things about me that the rest of the world does not know. I could not function without them in my business, but I wouldn't want to do life without them in general, just because they are amazing human beings and I love them so, so much. Um, so that being said, everybody today is Colleen's birthday. So Miss Colleen gets to wear the crown today. So everybody, if you've got a second, please wish Colleen a very, very happy, happy birthday because she is one of my favorite people on the entire planet and I'm blessed to have her in my life. So I just want to share. I just want everybody to share the love because she is an exceptional human being and I, I love her. <laughs> Can you tell? I kind of love her a little bit, just a little bit. Maybe more than a little bit, but you know. So happy birthday to my dear Colleen, whose name I just recently changed within the past five minutes to Eleanor. <laughs> so happy birthday, Eleanor. I love you. <laughs> oh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So happy birthday to my my bestie. Um, let's see. What else? 
Uh, yeah, maker mixes. So I don't have a maker mix for this week. And I normally don't have a maker mix when I put the maker mixes on sale. And so that's what's going on right now. Maker mixes are 40% off. That's a big, that's a big sale, y'all. That's serious. That's serious. We got 40% off on all maker mixes, all of them. There are no exceptions to that rule. So if you've got your eye on a maker mix, or there's one that you've been, you've had in your cart for a minute, it, now's probably a good time to get it. Because 40% off, I very rarely go that low on sales. Um, but I need to move some of those maker mixes out to make room for some new ones. So that's kind of what I'm doing. So while you're shopping on the kits for today, if you want to grab a maker mix, just throw one of them into your cart. You don't have to use like a coupon code or anything like that. It will just automatically take off the 40% for you when you go to checkout. But keep in mind, that's only through Monday. So if you watch this on replay Thursday of next week, the sale is over. So please don't come at me and be like, I didn't get my 40% off because it literally, there's a time limit there. It's today through Monday, 40% off all maker mixes. Uh, speaking of maker mixes, we have a winner, 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 chicken dinner. So you guys know that um, the maker mixes, not only do they help su to support uh, my business, but the maker mixes are really, really special. Uh, maker mixes are made in, in very small quantities. They are limited uh, availability. There are things that I have in my stash that I don't have enough of to make kits out of, um, but I do make small maker mixes out of them. And then I put them in my shop and you guys buy them up, make pieces of jewelry using them. And then you post them. And every time you post them, you're entered to win in a drawing. And that drawing is handled by Eleanor. <laughs> Colleen. Um, and so monthly, she takes all of those pictures, she puts them into an app, the app spins the wheel, and you get a winner for that. So we have a winner. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember or not, but March and April, so this will be our winner for March and April. March and April were combined because um, of the move, and it was an abbreviated month. And there were a lot of factors that went into combining those two. That won't happen very often. And of course, you guys will always know when that's the case. But March and April, um, the drawing, all of those were combined together. So the winner of the goodie bag is uh, Mary Smith. So congratulations to Mary Smith. She is our Maker Mix winner. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with how to enter, all you have to do is just create a piece of jewelry using your Maker Mix. You don't, it's not, we are not voting on it. We're not judging you. You just make something, post it, and then you get entered into the contest to win. You just make sure you post it in the right place. Colleen can let you know where that's at. Um, just make sure that you, um, you mark it so that we all know that it was made with a maker mix. Cecilia says maker mixes go fast. They do go very, very quickly, particularly when I put them on sale and 40% off is a big one. So um, don't, don't sleep on those maker mixes if you want one. I'm just saying. Um, okay. So got all that. Congratulations to Mary. Mary, I will be getting in touch with you soon to get a shipping address for you to put together a, a box of goodies. Guys, the goodie boxes are, well, it's bag, but are always fun. I'm just saying, like, I share my stuff. I share my stuff with you. <laughs> I always try to include something that's a little high end and then just some extra goodies to go with it. It's always different. So you always, like, if you've won before, don't hesitate to try again because the, the goodie bags are always different. Okay, so um, anything else that I need to tell you guys? I don't think so. Uh, I think we can get right down to what our Feel Good Friday show is all about. So for those of you who are new to Feel Good Friday, Feel Good Friday is just that. It's all about feeling good. I want to send you into the weekend being uh, inspired but not bogged down with technique. Um, and so the jewelry pieces for Feel Good Friday shows are always super, super easy. They're instant gratification jewelry that you can easily recreate. You can purchase all of the maker mixes that are on sale and every single one of the kits, every single piece of jewelry that you see in today's show is available in kit format over in my Etsy shop. So you go over to the Etsy shop, you pick out which kits you want, put them in your cart, check out. I mail those off to you on Mondays. You get them as quickly as possible. Um, and then you can come back and rewatch the video to, to learn or to get a refresher on how to put those together. 
So that being said, just know that if you've never ordered a kit from me before, I don't include instructions because of these videos. You can always go back on YouTube or you can come back here to Facebook if you want to, to rewatch them and just watch the step-by-step -step for how to put those together. So um, don't come at me if you don't have any instructions in there. Trust me, girl doesn't got time to do that, but you can easily access these videos. Um, okay, so... That being said, I've got five kits for you. I've got two pairs of earrings. I've got two necklaces and one bracelet, all instant gratification, ready to rock and roll. Let's do it. I'm going to turn you guys around. All right, let's get started. All right, so we're going to start out with super easy earrings. I've got I've got a lot of Tierra cast included in today's show. Um, I, I got all of my Tierra cast goodies from... Uh, our dear friend, Danielle Wick. So be sure, I know I say this every Friday, uh, but be sure that when you're shopping with me, you also take a look over at Danielle Wick's shop. Uh, she always has amazing things in her Etsy shop. She's a fellow designer and a very dear, dear friend of mine. And uh, Danielle, as well as Sam and Sam Speed Shop, those are two of my, my, my biggest, my biggest, what, how would I say it? I'm their biggest fan. I'll put it that way. So please make sure that you are uh, checking out Danielle and checking out Sam. So our our earrings project, our first earrings project for today is a uh, super simple snake earrings project. Now these snakes are, um, these little rattlesnake charms are Tierra Cash charms. And this, this kit comes in two colorways. So we've got this in the copper, which is what's in my hand right now. And then it also comes in the silver, which is like an antique silver. I'm going to put this together super, super quick. Because like I said, instant gratification. Um, but either one, it's really hard for me to decide which one I like the best. For one, I love the combination of this green and the copper. But I do love that antique silver with that, that black patina running through there. That's just really, really awesome. So that's why those come in two, two different colors because I couldn't decide. So let's put these together really, really quickly and then we'll move on to the next, okay? So all I really need here is the silver stuff. I don't know why I have all this copper in here. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna attach our beads here to the bottom of our charm. So we're gonna take a head pin and we are gonna thread on two of these super cool little beads. So these have that amazing texture running all through them. They're also electroplated, so they have that metallic. They're just really, really pretty. And they're they're not perfect, right? They're they're supposed to simulate like geodes. So they all have like their own little little character to them. All right, so that's going to go down on a head pin. We are going to come in with our chain nose pliers and we're going to start a wrapped loop. So grabbing the bead, or I'm sorry, grabbing the wire right where it is exiting the bead. I'm going to bend that wire over the top of the pliers. So when I take the pliers away, I've got a little bit of room here. That's where I'm going to put my wire wraps. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers, grabbing the wire, and I'm going to take the wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers. All right now I need to make a loop out of this. I can't do that because the bottom barrel of the pliers is in the way. So in order to get the room that I need to do that, all I'm going to do is just rotate the pliers in my hands. That moves that bottom barrel to the top and gives me the space I need to take that wire all the way over to the other side to create my loop. Now before I do my wraps, I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers. I'm going to open that just slightly, right? And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to wire wrap it directly to my charm. So I'm going to take the tail end of this wire and I'm going to thread it through the bottom of my charm. And then I'm just going to snap those two together. Okay. I'm going to use my bent chain nose pliers. That keeps the tip of the pliers out of the way. All right. I'm going to hold on just like that and switch hands here. And then I'm going to wire wrap in the space between the loop that we just created and the top of that bead. So now I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and I'm going to trim off the excess. And if you need to come in with your chain nose pliers and just tuck in the end of the wire, particularly if you couldn't get in there with your pliers and get it cut really, really short. Okay. So that's wire wrapped directly to there. We don't have any jump rings here. You don't have to worry that anything is going to come undone. You've got a really good secure connection here. 
Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use an eye pin to put a little crystal up here on the top. Now you always, when you get these kits, you don't have to put this together the exact same way that I did it. You can always kind of mix this up, put your crystal on the bottom. You can leave beads out to make it shorter if you need to, or you know, you can add your own beads to it to make it longer. I'm gonna use an eye pin. I'm gonna go ahead and open that eye pin just with a twist. And I'm gonna thread that onto the top of my little snake charm and close that back. and I'm gonna thread on my little crystal bicone. They do look like druzy beads. They're faux, they're not real druzies, but, um, but they're supposed to look like druzies for sure. All right, now we're gonna do a wrapped loop here on the top of this little crystal. Just be careful so that you don't crack your crystal, okay? Bending the wire over the top of the pliers, coming in with our round nose pliers. And again, we're going up and over. Rotate the pliers, take the wire over to the other side, and then wire wrap in that space. Don't push the wire wraps. If you've only got room for three, don't try to push for four. If you've only got room for two, don't try to push for three, because you will crack the top of that crystal. Bicones are notorious for cracking if you're not careful. So just be mindful of that. And then also be mindful of that when you're coming in with your cutter tool as well. You don't want to accidentally nip the inside of that or the outside edge rather of that bicone. Okay, so trim off the excess, carefully tuck in your ends, and then all you want to do is just add your ear wire to that. These are so cool. It's the green blue combination that I'm really, really obsessed with. I've been saving these little green blue beads for a really, really long time. I've had them for a while. I've just been waiting for the perfect project for them, and I think that's this is definitely the perfect project. They definitely give like that, that snake vibe, but it's still like sparkly and, and yummy, right? All right. So again, just another quick look at these. These are in the shop in the antique silver color. It's just listed as silver. And then the other option is the copper and it's like an antique copper. It's so hard to decide which one I like the best. It's funny because the copper brings out the blue and the green beads, whereas the silver really brings out the green in those beads. You get such a different look just by mixing the metals or changing the metal up rather, right? All right, so those are our first little earrings kits for the day. Let's move on to the next. All right, so the next little earrings kit that I've got for you guys is another super, super easy one. Cluster earrings are always a good idea. These are super cute. So I got these fabulous little check glass flowers. You guys have a ton of these flowers that Danielle sent me. So you're going to be seeing more of these little flowers. I'll show you what they look like on the back so you can see how they are drilled. So they're drilled with like a little pip on the back, right? Just like a little pinch of glass and then they're drilled through so that they sit really beautifully. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to create more kits with these. I'm probably going to do a cluster bracelet with these maybe next week, but I think they would make really awesome little rings because of the way that they're drilled. You could make yourself a little bird's nest of wire underneath them. They're just super, super cute. But anyway, I'm using them as the focal for a little pair of cluster earrings with some beautiful frosted glass beads. So we're going to put these together super, super quick. Okay. So um, all you're going to want to do with these, we've made clusters before. It's just uh, your beads on head pins and then some jump rings to connect them. Some of these I've already wire wrapped. So I've wire wrapped four of them. We're going to wire, wire wrap three of them together. So I'm just going to put them onto head pins. We'll do our wrapped loops and then we will assemble all of this together. So we'll just go ahead and do that. The flower beads are super versatile. The way that they're drilled makes them perfect for so many different projects. And you know what else they're really good for? It's sort of like a button. It's like a shank style button. So you can use these as a clasp as well. You know how we use, like you're going to see a project here in just a little while where we have a button as a clasp. You could substitute a button for one of these beads. They're so cool. They really, really are awesome. Okay. So wrapped loops on all three of these. We're just following the same steps as usual, bending the wire over the top of the pliers. That leaves us the right amount of room here coming in with our round nose pliers. We're going up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side, and then we're just going to wind it up. Right. 
and I'll cut all of these at the same time. So we're going up and over, rotate. Got one more to go. All of the kits this week are super, super easy. I've been trying to keep our Friday projects as simple as possible. I feel like you guys really respond to the ones that are easy, like true instant gratification jewelry. They seem to sell better than any of the others. So I've really been trying to focus on like beautiful jewelry that does not take a ton of technique. So I don't want you to be stressed, right? I don't want you to be stressed out when you get a kit. All right, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim off. We got a grumpy face in the house. Somebody needs to give somebody a Snickers bar. <laughs> That's okay. She said, sorry for the mad face, finger slip. It's all good. You can still have a Snickers though, right? Like I don't turn down chocolate. I'm just saying. I, I never turn down. I don't turn down snacks of any variety. <laughs> Okay, so once you have wire wrapped all of these little beads, okay, now we're going to we're going to connect all of them with our little jump rings here. Now, that being said, something that I want to mention, I know that most not most of us, but a lot of us prefer a wrapped loop over a simple loop just because if you're like me, you struggle with those simple loops. However, if the wire wrap adds too much metal to your cluster, if it's just visually irritating to you, don't do wrapped loops with these. Do simple loops with them. Or maybe if you're better at the simple loops, do those instead. Okay. It's it's totally up to you. I'm just I'm just here to guide you in the right direction. You ultimately get to decide how it goes together. Okay. All right. So I've got a jump ring here with a pair of pliers. I'm gonna use a second pair of pliers to hold. And then I'm just gonna twist to open our jump ring up. And I'm gonna thread on three of our beads. So there's two, and then I'm going to thread on another one here, and I'm going to close that back. Okay. Is that the way I did this? I feel like I needed an extra jump ring on the bottom. Let's look. It's funny. I can't even remember how I put this together. Okay. Yeah. So I, that's what I was thinking. Let's back up a second here. This is not right. So the bottom bead for our cluster, so that it hangs a little bit lower, that bottom bead is actually gonna go on its own individual jump ring, okay? So just one bead on that bottom jump ring. And let's close that back, okay? Now we're gonna step up. We're gonna take another jump ring and we're gonna thread it onto the jump ring that we just added, okay? And then we wanna put a bead on this and we want this to be balanced. So we wanna be sure that a bead goes on either side. Don't put both of the beads on the same side cause it'll hang sideways and it just doesn't look as good. So what do I mean by that? I'm gonna put a bead on and then I'm gonna grab with the other pair of pliers. I'm gonna put a bead on the other side. That just ensures that there is one on either side when we go to close this back. I also want to be sure that when I attach my next jump ring, that it goes between those two beads. All right, so open that up, thread that on, All right? That keep, that's, I made sure there's still a bead on either side. I'm gonna thread another bead on each side. Close that back, okay? We've got one more jump ring and two more beads. And again, making sure that that jump ring hangs so that there's a bead on either side. And then I'm going to close that back. Okay, so now we have our little cluster here. These little clusters are great for all kinds of things, and you can use whatever kind of bead you want to to make a cluster. But again, if that metal, all of those wire wraps, if that is just too much metal for you in your cluster, I know that some people just don't like that. You can do simple loops, and it definitely takes away a lot of that metal look. Um, but hopefully the beads are big enough that it doesn't bother you too bad. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an eye pin and... 
Oops. I'm going to attach my eye pin to my cluster before I attach it to my check glass bead here. My eye pin is a little, a little crooked. So I'm just going to treat the eye pin just like I would a jump ring, twist to open it, and then I want to thread it on the same way, making sure that, number one, it's the top jump ring, which is kind of hard to do once you put your cluster down. But not only that, making sure that it's even, right? So that just like a jump ring, there's a bead on either side and not the top beads being both on the same side. Okay, close that loop back. Now we're gonna thread our check glass flower onto this. So just very carefully put that on and you just wanna drop that down. Now, I'm gonna do a simple loop on the back of this. If you want to do a, a wraps loop, you absolutely can. I'm just going to keep it, keep it easy. So I'm going to come back here to the back, just flip this over, right? And instead of bending the wire over my pliers, I'm just bending the wire right where it is exiting the hole on the back of this bead, coming in with my cutter tool. And I want to leave myself about a fourth of an inch of wire. Trim that off. And then I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. And I'm going to grab that wire and I'm going to roll it back towards the bead and towards my hand to create a simple loop. That gives us a connection to add our ear wire. So I'm just going to open up our ear wire and thread that on. And that's it, you guys. Super, super simple, but these are so pretty for spring. I think these would make really beautiful bridesmaids jewelry because you could do these really quickly and that they all have you know i don't know they just they look like party earrings to me so bridesmaids jewelry or if you're going to a wedding and you want to wear something other than pearls because i know we've talked a lot about pearls over the past few weeks this periwinkle periwinkle blue purple combo is just it's really really beautiful without being too pastel you know what i mean like there's still a little sass in there because that that purple all right, so that was our second earrings kit for the day. I'm going to set these to the side, and we're going to move on. So I've got two necklace projects for you. These are both super, super simple to do, as is all of the projects for today. But this one is one that sold out immediately when I had it in silver. So now I have it in the brass color. It's a little bit different than the one that we did in silver, um, but I think this one will go pretty quickly as well. This one has this very Southwestern style uh, project here. And it includes some of these reconstituted beads. They look like bronze eye and turquoise together. I'm not real sure what they are. I'm pretty sure it's just some halite, but they're still super cool regardless. And then the Tierra cast spacer beads in brass and the Tierra cast pendant that goes with it. So I don't know if you guys remember or not, but we did this with silver. So this is the this is the brass or the gold color for this project, okay? All right, so we're gonna start out super, super simple. It's The whole thing is really simple, honestly. We're gonna take a piece of wire here that's included in your kit. I've already pre-cut it. I made sure that you had plenty just in case you mess up your first wrapped loop, okay? I'm gonna come in with my pliers. I'm gonna do a, uh, a wrapped loop on one end, but I wanna make that loop a little bit bigger because we do wanna be sure that it's big enough to accommodate our suede, okay? So I'm gonna come down on the wire about two inches and I'm going to bend the wire over the top of the pliers. Okay. Now when I come in with my round nose pliers, I'm going to use the back of the pliers back here where it is a little bit bigger. That's going to give us a bigger loop. Normally I make my loops up here. I need this one to be a little bigger. So just come back here, go up and over, rotate and take the wire over to the other side. And then you're going to wire wrap about three times. Okay. So you've got a nice big loop. Basically, we've just created an eye pin with a wrapped loop and we made it with a nice big opening. I'm going to trim off the excess wire. And then I'm going to set this to the side for just a second before we string everything up. We need to take care of our little pendant here. So our pendant doesn't have a bail on it of any kind. So we're going to use a combination of um, six and four millimeter jump rings to get this to hang the way that we want it to and not be crowded next to our beads. So I'm just going to take a six millimeter jump ring here and I'm going to open it up. I'm going to thread it on to our pendant and then I'm going to thread on a four millimeter jump ring. 
that's going to be our go-between jump ring, right? That's going to ensure that the next jump ring that we add makes everything hang the correct direction, right? So I'm going to open up another jump ring and add that on. So if you're curious about the jump rings in your kit and why you have so many, this is why you have so many. It's just to make sure that our pendant, number one, hangs down far enough below our beads that it doesn't get crowded, um, but that it also will string correctly and hang front facing on your pendant. Okay, so I'm just going to close that back and we're going to thread that on to our wire with our beads just like we would if it were a bead. All right, so you've got enough beads so that you've got eight beads on one side. We're going to do four. So I'm going to thread on four beads. And then I'm going to thread on one of these really beautiful spacer beads. I'm going to thread on four more. Wanda says she loves this pinda. I do too. I have it in copper as well. I got these from Danielle. They're Sierra cast, but I got them from Danielle. She's like super amazing. Okay, now I'm going to thread on another one of these little spacer beads, and then I'm going to thread on that jump ring on the top of our pendant, and then another one of these spacer beads. So that's just going to create like a little metal center for our focal, All right? You can see how that's going to hang together. And now you also see why that four millimeter jump ring, not only is it helping to make everything hang the correct direction, but it keeps it from making our pendant crowded, right? It needs a little bit of space between the beads so that it can really hang instead of it just like sitting there. I don't like it when it doesn't have its own movement. All right, so bringing those down, I'm gonna thread on four more of these beads. We're almost done with this part. And we're just gonna secure all of this with a wrapped loop. So four more. Okay, and then one of our spacers. Like Tierra Cast knows what they're doing. I just want to show you. Like, look at that. So not only is the quality just like top notch, but like even the details are perfect. That's why Tierra Cast is so good. They really are like above and beyond when it comes to metal. And Sam can tell you they they test all of their metals. They're very particular. So you know that all of the Tierra Cast metals are safe, which is also super important. All right, so we've got all of our beads here on our piece of wire. Yes, our wire is straight at the moment. We're going to fix it here in just a second. But before we do that, let's go ahead and make a wrap loop on this end to secure all of our beads. We're going to come in with our chain nose pliers. And we just want to do the same steps. So bending the wire over the top of the pliers. <clears throat> Okay, now we're making another loop, but remember we want to come back here to the back of those pliers so that we can get as large of a loop as we possibly can. And then we want to wire wrap in that space. Cheryl is loving, and so is Wanda, the Southwestern feel. That was huge this year with Tierra Cast. And part of the reason, guys, like all of these companies, they're paying attention, as am I. Uh, but we're all in the industry paying attention to what is popular right now. Um, and the Yellowstone craze is still going full blast. And so Southwestern is, is everywhere this summer. You're going to see it. Uh, you've been seeing it in clothes, of course, but you're going to be seeing it more in jewelry over the next couple of months transitioning into fall. I know I can't believe we're talking about that. Summer's not even here yet, but you know how the trends, how quickly the trends change with clothes and fashion and everything. Um, but you're going to be seeing more of that. And I think that's why, I don't think, I know that's why uh, Tierra Cast really focused on their Southwestern line. So we've got the cactus here. There are a couple of other pendants that are like that. There's the, of course, the snakes that you saw earlier. Um, they all have that kind of Southwestern feel so that when you're wearing your prayer, your prairie dress, should you buy one? <laughs> 
<laughs> Karen says she's been making a lot of Southwest themed jewelry for the boutiques and they sell really fast. They do because everybody's obsessed with that right now, like obsessed with that. And so I I'm not mad about it. Like it sells. So I'm, I'm not mad about it at all. All right. So basically as we were talking, you can see because this has that, um, that wire core, I'm just kind of shaping it into the drape that I want. You can keep it straight if you want to. You can make this a V if you want to. You really have the um, the opportunity to really kind of create whatever shape you want with your beads once you've got them all on the wire, okay? But most importantly, we've got these large loops here, and that's where we're going to attach our suede lace to this. This is faux suede lace. No animal was harmed in the making, Um You've got two pieces of this in your kit. I'm just going to do, well, I'll do both of them. I don't know that I'm going to necessarily put the cord ends on both of them. But basically what I'm going to do is I want to bring the two ends together and find the middle, right? I'm going to thread that on to our loop. And again, you want to bring that to the middle. And if you want to, you can, excuse me, sorry, guys. If you want to, you can tie... <laughs> Wanda says, I love the Southwest theme, but no way am I ever wearing a prairie dress. I'm not Laura Ingalls Wilder. Same girl, same. You will not catch me. First of all, you're never going to catch me in a dress unless like it's a super special occasion. I'm just not that kind of girl. Um, but you're definitely not going to catch me in a prairie dress. Have y'all seen the ones they have at Target? Oh my gosh, they're so ugly. <laughs> I hope I'm not offending you if you love them, but um, no, they're just, that's just not my jam. Okay. So you can tie an overhanded knot here. If you want to, you can take some of your excess wire because you have a little bit left over. You can wrap around to bundle if you want to, or you can just leave this, right? You just leave it like it is. Um, I'm going to tie a little overhanded knot just because I like it when it's naughty. Um, but you don't have to, you don't have to. In fact, in the picture of this, in the listing, I didn't. Oh, Kathy, you're so sweet. Kathy on YouTube says, just wanted to say how much I enjoy your tutorials and how much I have learned from you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Couldn't do it without you guys. All right. So overhanded knot. You can do a barrel knot here if you wanted to, too. Like you have options. You don't have to do this the way I do it. Okay. So there's my little knot. That's just going to keep my, my cords together. And then you're going to come down here to the end. You want to take your two cords and you want to overlap them so that they're sitting on top of each other. And then you've got your cord ends here. You're going to place those into your cord ends. You can add a little bit of glue to this if you want to, but you're going to use your pliers very carefully. You're going to fold over one side of your fold over cord end. And then you're going to use your pliers to fold over the other side. Now, because it's doubled up, you do have to be careful. Just go slow. It's chunky, but it will fit. Okay, it will fit in the cord end. You just work with it a little bit. And then once you get the two laid down, you just want to give them a good squeeze. Okay, now I do have a little tiny bit of the suede sticking out. If that bothers you, you can come in with your cutter and trim it off. It really doesn't bother me too much. That's on the back. You're not really going to see it anyway. But then you've got a, a loop here for you to put your jump ring and then your clasp on this. Okay. So that's what you're going to do for the length. I'm going to go ahead and do that over here on this side. I'm not going to use the cord end though. I am, I'm just going to save the cord end for another day, another project. But I will go ahead and put this on here so that at the end we can put this on the bust and you can see what it looks like hanging because... It doesn't look as good if you don't at least finish the length portion. So found the middle of my two pieces of suede. I'm going to do an overhanded knot with this one as well. Um, and you can trim up your suede. You definitely want to make sure that both ends or that they're both the same length. So you may have to trim them a little bit anyway. But um, before you put your cord ends on there, right, bring them together Make sure they're the same. I would have to cut some off of this one to put the cord in on. And then you just want to add your, your hardware to it. And that's it. So pretty and so, so simple. And this is one of those pieces that looks really awesome all by itself. 
or you can layer this up with some other brass and silver. Um, even some other turquoise pieces would look amazing with this. And then you've got enough of the suede lace in your kit that you really can adjust the length of this. So I wanted to make sure that I accommodated everybody because some people are going to want this to be a longer necklace. Other people are going to want to wear this short and then layer it with longer pieces. So I wanted to be sure that I gave you enough of the suede lace for that. So there you go. There's our first of two little necklaces. <laughs> Ruby Facebook says, my husband used to say they look like a tent maker made them, right? Yeah. Like you could take a whole prairie worth of children and put them under your skirt and like sneak them out of where I don't, I don't know why you would want to sneak these kids. And I'm not sure where you're going, but like maybe if there's like a, a bad gunslinger in town, I'm just going to stop talking y'all. I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm not much of a, a Western kind of person. So I'm just, don't even listen to me. Okay. So our next necklace is another super, super simple one, but this one is definitely, definitely has a different feel to it. <laughs> I'm glad y'all are laughing. <laughs> this one is, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out why it is. I don't want to smuggle children under my skirt anywhere, but I mean, you never know. Okay. Anyway, moving on. This definitely has a different feel. This is not a Southwestern style piece of jewelry at all. In fact, this kind of has like a little bit of a rockabilly feel to it because it is uh, what I'm going to call cherries. Okay. So when you go to look for this listing, it's it's called the cherry necklace. You don't have to call them cherries if you don't want to, but that's what they remind me of. Originally it was going to be roses, but cherries is what we, that's where we are now. So cherries it is. All right. So this is a super cute, very easy to put together. We're just making some little beaded links with some simple loops. We've got these beautiful faceted red beads with um, these little green beads on either side. And like I said, you can just imagine, suspend your imagination for a moment and en envision that these are I'm sorry, suspend reality for a moment. Use your imagination <laughs> to en envision that these are cherries. So we've got a larger one that's going to go in the center here. This one's already done. We're going to put this one together as well. Okay. So this is going to be the center of our little necklace. We do have some of these little baby rondelles. They're not quite babies, but our little toddler rondelles here. And then we have some of these super cute little Celtic connectors to go between each one of our little beaded sections and then one each on the ends. The length of this necklace is chain. You've got a good amount of chain, but this is definitely a necklace that is on the shorter side. So if you're looking for like a 24 inch necklace, you're not going to get that with this one. I didn't include that much uh, chain. All right. Now we're going to use these little rondelles to make some little cherries that are going to hang right here from either one of these little connectors. So we're actually going to do that first and then we'll work on putting the rest of this together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our little rondelles. I'm working. I'm going to do two at a time just so that they're kind of even, but I'm going to put two rondelles onto head pins and then I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers here. And I want to try to keep them as even as possible. One's for the one side and one's for the other side. Okay. And we're just going to create the little stem by using our head pin wire. And I'm just bending. They're not exactly the same length, but they're pretty darn close. And once it's hanging, you're never going to notice. Okay. So I bent both of those over the pliers. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool. I'm going to do these individually. Robin says I'd snuggle all the puppies under my 1800s dress. All of them, right? Same. I want to snuggle. I want to snuggle. <laughs> I want to smuggle all of the puppies. You guys, I'm going to have a conversation with Q later because he wants to get a husky. Like he already has Xena, of course. He wants to get a husky. And as I was laying in bed this morning thinking to myself, I was like, you know what? If he got a husky and I got a husky, we could have a breeding pair. We could have like we could we could breed huskies and like that'd be a really good side hustle. I'm not saying I'm doing that. And those of you who are don't like dog breeders don't come after me. Mutts are 100 percent amazing. Uh, but I, I just these that's what I think about in the mornings when I'm trying to talk myself out of laying in bed and pushing snooze one more time. Um but honestly, it's for selfish reasons because I just want puppies. Does that make sense? <laughs> Are you following my train of thought here? I just want, I just want puppies. Any puppies will do. I don't care. All right. So I bent that wire just like I'm going to do a simple loop, which I am going to do, but we're not doing it down here at the bead. We're using the wire as the actual stem of our little cherry. Okay. 
Albert and a Husky would make the most beautiful babies ever, Kathy. I agree with you. Like Husky Golden Retriever babies would be amazing. The problem is, is that Q wants a, he wants a boy. He wants a boy dog. And that wouldn't breed well, obviously, with Albert. So I'm making a little, making a little loop here with my round nose pliers. It's not perfect, but I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. All I want is just to be sure that I have a good, secure loop. I love Huskies too, but they are escape artists. I used to have a Husky and he was forever getting out of the backyard. If you don't watch him. All right. So wraps loop or not a wraps loop, but a simple loop on that one. So one goes on one side, one goes on the other side. We're going to put another one next to it, but I want the little stem for these to be a little bit shorter. <coughs> Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing and I want to do these at the same time so that hopefully they're going to be the same as close to the same length as possible. And I want them to be a little bit shorter. Okay, so coming in with my pliers and give that a bend. Okay, and then just looking at it, you can see it is shorter than the ones that we just made. Okay, I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trimming off, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch. Roll back to make myself a loop. Do the same thing with the other one. <laughs> Gloria says... Pitbulls are, are rascals too. She had to uh, have one. She said, I have one had to bail him out of doggy jail a few times in his younger years. Right. Albert, my golden is a, he's a wanderer. I have to watch him. He's not too bad, but he, since we've moved, his confidence has grown and he really, if you're not paying attention, he just take off down the road. He's like, see ya. I'm going to check out the cows. But he doesn't try to escape, escape. Like, he always comes back. But the husky that I had, you know, he'd stay gone for weeks. And we'd think he was gone for good. And then he'd show back up again. I'd be like, oh, well, there you are. All right. So now we're going to put all of this together. Okay. This is our focal. I still need to put our beads here on eye pins. You have extra long eye pins because I was out of the short ones. I just got a new shipment in today. So please don't be mad that you're going to have all this leftover. <laughs> Sorry about that. Use the wire for something else. All right. So we're doing just a simple loop. So I'm bending the wire right as it exits the bead. I don't have to do it over the top of my pliers. And I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trim off. And now I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. That's too long. I need to trim some more of this off. Coming in with the round nose pliers, just like we've been doing and roll back to create your simple loop. Okay. And then we're going to do this one. This one over here is already done. I had a beagle that um, escaped too. <laughs> one is this, holy smokes, is that a six inch eye pin? Right? I mean, it's like the longest eye pin in the history of eye pins. I don't know how I ended up with these crazy long ones, but I did. And now I'm just trying to use them up because... Yeah. So you're getting them in your kits. <laughs> You'll have plenty of wire left over to use for whatever you need. Okay. All right. Coming in to trim off. I'm like, look at that. Like I have, a, I have like at least two and a half inches left over. Don't throw that away. Use that for something else. And then with a round nose pliers, roll back, roll back. Okay. And we've got our loops. All right. Now we're ready to assemble all of this. And we're going to use the loops on the ends for that. So basically you're going to come in after you've made all those loops, you're going to open them very gently. You're going to thread on your connector and then you're going to close that back. So don't go looking for jump rings for this. You just got to utilize the loops on your little beaded sections. Okay. Unless you want to use jump rings from your own stash. And you absolutely can do that. Okay. 
So I'm just making my way down the line of all of our little beads here, just opening, threading on our little connector. And then closing it back. So we're making like a little chain out of our beads and our connectors. I've got one more connector to go on the end here. All right, so I've got all of those linked together, okay? And because these are on pieces of wire, you can bend them a little if you wanna give them each like a little, a little U shape you can, or you can keep them straight. It doesn't make any difference. It's up to you, your necklace, you do what you wanna do, okay? But now we're gonna attach our little, our little cherries here. We're gonna use these little jump rings to do that. So I'm gonna open up a jump ring and I'm gonna thread on both of our little pretend cherries. So there's one and there's the other. Okay. And then our little connector here, you'll see it has two loops. You can connect to either one of these. I'm going to connect to the first one. So I'm just going to put my jump ring right through that first little opening, close that back. I need to readjust my shapes of my use here. There we go. Probably should have just left them alone, honestly, but hold on. I just want to make sure that my cherries are actually going to be on the same side. There we go. So they're going to go right there. So I'm going to use another jump ring. And attach to this little connector. So just like that. How cute is that, right? And then you're just gonna use some jump rings to attach your chain. You've got a clasp and the whole bit. I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna attach mine with the jump rings. Okay, so there's one side, here's the other. Shelly has a question. Shelly says, is it important to have the eye pin loops going either the same direction but horizontal to each other? So it really kind of just depends on the project. You're going to see that there are certain projects where it's not going to make any difference what, one way or another. Um, and then there will be other projects where it will matter. And that's all about how things are going to fall. You know, if you need things to be front facing, um, sometimes you need those to be going all the same direction. Sometimes you're going to need to have one going one way and one going the other way. For a project like this, it really doesn't make any difference at all. Um, the only the only place that it matters is right here in the front. So both of these loops are going the same direction. Um, that's just so that they connect to this connector and the connector is going to face forward so that I can hang these cherries from it. The rest of them, it really doesn't make any difference one way or another. You may find that your necklace will twist a little bit if they're all going different directions, you know, one going one way, one going the other way. But a lot of times it's it's too hard to tell until you've actually connected everything. Um, and the good news is that you can always come in, you know, and change it very easily with your pliers. So something that I probably wouldn't stress so much about as you're making your simple loops until you put everything together. Then you can come in and like grab the loop with your pliers and just kind of twist it depending on how things need to hang. Um, but you'll see it's it's project specific more than anything. So there is no like rule of thumb definitely this way or definitely the other way. So there you go. There's our cute little necklace. Just another little sun summertime. It definitely has summertime vibes, right? It has a little bit of rockabilly, 
a little bit, you know, it's got that kind of 1950s feel to it. But honestly, you don't even have to be rockabilly to get away with this. It's just cute. Red and green and cherries. Who doesn't love that? And if you don't like the cherries, take the cherries off of it. It's still just a really pretty necklace and you can call them roses if you want to. Totally up to you. But definitely something different for us, uh, especially in comparison to the other kind of Southwestern things that we have in today's show. All right, so I've got one more project for you guys. It's a bracelet project. It's a super easy one. We're going to put it together really, really quickly, and then I'm going to let you guys go for the day, okay? So we've got a super cool little knotted bracelet project with some check glass beads. This one comes in two different colors. You can get it in this really awesome turquoise with these, like, they're sort of, they're sort of turbine beads. Not exactly, but pretty close. They're just textured bicones, basically. They're check glass. Got these from Danielle. So you've got this one in the turquoise. The other option is um, some check glass rondelles in like a raspberry pink color, which is also really beautiful. You've got seed beads in this one. You've also got the Tierra cast spacer beads in the antique silver. They're just as pretty as the brass ones that were in our necklace. And then you've got a B button. The button is a shank style button. We're going to use that as our clasp for our bracelet. Okay. All right. So to save a little bit of time, I went ahead and thread on several of the seed beads onto my piece of cord. Okay. So you've got some cord here, got black cord and I thread those on. I want to bring those beads to the middle. So I'm going to take my cord ends. Oh, I've got a knot here. Let's undo our knot before we really make a mess. Okay. All right. So just bring your two cord ends together. And that'll bring your seed beads to the center of your piece of cord. And what we want to do is we just want to create a loop with these because this is going to be the, um, the loop that goes over our button for our clasp. And so we're starting on one end. Take all of your seed beads, hold them together, hold your ends together, and you just want to tie an overhanded knot. And you want to bring that knot down so that it is right next to, try not to grab the seed beads in your knot like mine are trying to sneak in. And you can use your beading all if it's if it's a little bit of a struggle. I know sometimes these little knots with this slippery cord can be hard. So I'll just stick my beading all in there and use it to pull my knot down. Okay, so now you've got a knot and you've got two strands for your bracelet here. Now, here's where you've got some options. Okay, I'm going to set these extra seed beads to the side. Save at least four seed beads, okay, out of the ones that you've got. Use all of them but four for your kit or for your loop. Now, you can do this bracelet two different ways. You can double up, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a bead on each strand and then tie them together. Or you can do one bead at a time, okay, and do a knot. And that's going to give you a longer bracelet. So everybody has the same amount of beads. Everybody has the same length of cord. But you can, you can kind of change the way you put this together to accommodate whatever size bracelet you're going to need. Okay. So for me, I'm going to double up, which means that I'm going to take one strand. I'm going to thread on a bead. Then I'm going to take the other strand and thread on a bead. So I'm going to check glass bead on either one. And then I'm just going to bring those together and make a little bundle out of them. I'm going to tie an overhanded knot. If you don't want to do it that way and you want to utilize your beads for the length of your bracelet, then just do one bead, right? Oop. Okay, so there's our little beady bundle here. Now I'm going to take both cords, I'm going to bring those together, and I'm going to thread on a spacer bead onto both cords. Drop that down. It's going to sit right next to the knot that we just created. And I'm going to tie another knot on the other side. Okay, so there's a knot on either side of your spacer. And then I'm just going to repeat. 
And we're going to do this all the way down the length. So this will work up really, really quickly. Pull your knot down. Okay, two ends together again. Thread both. Or thread your spacer bead onto both. And then do another knot. Tim says, would the knotting tool work for this? It absolutely would. I see you, Tim. I see you. I put your name on the clipboard. <laughs> Tim's goal in life, you guys. So Tim is like my friend in real life. He's my buddy. Um, and his goal in life is, one of his goals in life, is to distract me while I am doing these lives. It's like a game to see if he can get me to giggle or laugh and not be able to stop. <laughs> so if you see him misbehaving, that's why. He's not doing it just to be, um, he's not doing it just to be funny, though he is really funny. Uh, he, he does it to try to get, to get a laugh out of me. I'm, I see you. I see you. <laughs> he gives me a hard time intentionally. <laughs> Colleen says Tim is the man. He is. He is. One of the very few male wire workers I know. And a good friend. A very, very good friend. He has helped me through some crap in my life, that's for sure. And continues to do so. It's just less crap now. He says I'm special. <laughs> Marion says he loves me. He he loves you. He does love me. We have we have a he loves me like a friend, y'all. Don't get crazy, okay? But yeah, he does love me. I know he does. I can't help that. I'm pretty lovable, right? Wanda says, ooh, are those made of Danielle spacers? They are. How did you know? How did you know? Nicole says, we all love Tim. We do. If we didn't, we wouldn't let him in, would we? <laughs> uh, do you alternate how to put... How to put the beads on? Not really. And the reason that I don't worry about it so much is because they're, I give them enough wiggle room that they're going to see how they can, they have enough room to switch places. Now, if you tie them tight enough, you know, because I give mine wiggle room just to give my bracelet a little extra length, but you can tie them down tight. If you tie them down tight, you can alternate them if you want to, but really mine are just going to kind of travel around and do whatever they want to. So I don't, I don't worry with it too much. I just let them, I let them be. All right, we're almost done. Tim may be silly, y'all, but he knows some things. <laughs> he really does. He is a very, very smart, smart person and has been through a lot in his life. And I, I, I consider him my sensei. Sensei Tim. He's different than my designated drivers. So I have Tim and then I have two buddies that I went to, or I didn't go to high school with, but we hung out uh, in high school. We were very, very good friends. And so I have Tim as my sensei and then I have my, my designated drivers. And I don't mean that in like the drinking sense. I mean, like I can't life without them uh, because if well, I mean, I can, but I have a tendency if I life without my designated life drivers, uh, I make real stupid mistakes. <laughs> so they're my designated life drivers. And so between my designated life drivers, uh, Tim, the sensei, Kathy, Colleen, and Nicole, you would think I would have like all my ducks in a row. And I still manage to make things 
I make a mess out of things. I'm telling you. <laughs> Even with an amazing, amazing friend group, I, uh, I still manage, you know, those memes where it says, I think my guardian angel drinks. That's me. Like my guardian angel. I, I, she's up there like shaking her head and rolling her eyes at me constantly because my designated drivers, my sensei and my girls are definitely doing that as well. <laughs> All right. So we're getting close to the end of this one. I just want to be sure that we get through this one so that you can see how I tie it off. It's not super hard, but you know, I always have people who get mad if I don't finish a project and I just tell you what to do with it. So we are going to make it all the way through this one. I've only got a couple more little knotted sections to do here. And listen, if you don't have a beading all, you can always use a pin, right? You, you just use what you can find. Don't feel like you got to go out and buy a special tool just to create knots. But having something like this to stick in the knot as you're pulling it tight definitely kind of helps if you struggle. All right, I've got one more spacer bead to go. Tim says ducks are hiding. <laughs> uh, it's because you don't feed them. You feed everything else. You're not feeding the ducks. You've got to start feeding those. He feeds the deer. Doesn't feed the ducks, though. All right. Pulling down that little knot. <laughs> Wanda says my guardian angel is greeted like Norm on Cheers when she walks into a bar. That's that's what I want. I wonder, I would imagine that's probably the same kind of greeting that mine gets. Because you got to know, like, all the other guardian angels up there are like, I'm so sorry that you got that person. <laughs> You're going to need a beer. Pull up a stool. <laughs> All right, here's our last, our last ones. You definitely could use a bead reamer, Kim. You just want to be careful. Um, you know, you don't, you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to use one that is too sharp. Um, not at the tip, but you know what I mean? Like the sandpapery grit that they have on them. When you're pulling down certain cords, you definitely don't want to. That's why I use this one because it's smooth. My other one is a definite bead reamer. You can see it has that has that texture to it. I don't, I don't use it for much, um, for that reason. Cause I just don't know how, how sharp, and you know, it could have like one little piece on it that could be bad. Okay. So we've knotted all of our beads. Okay. Now we have to add our button to this and we're just doing knots. I mean, it's as simple as it can be, but if I don't show it, somebody out there will be mad at me. So I'm just going to take the two cord ends. I'm going to thread them through that shank on the back. And I'm going to bring it down to the knot that we just finished. Now, this knot, though, I do want to make this a doubled up knot so that it's a little bit chunkier. So I'm going to do a surgeon's knot. So I wrap around my fingers and then I wrap through and I'm going to wrap through twice. That's just going to make this a little bit chunkier of a knot to ensure that uh, our, our shank, our knot doesn't sneak through our shank. Okay. And then I'm just going to pull that down. Okay, so there's a knot on either side of the shank to keep your button on. Now, we have this extra cord here. You don't want to make dangles with this. You don't have to. Add a little bit of glue to that last knot and just trim this off. Um, but I do want to add some of these little seed beads to it. So I'm going to thread two seed beads onto each one. And then I'm going to tie a knot. Was that a zebra bead reamer? It was a zebra bead reamer. I'll show it to you again here. Just like goes with my zebra tools. Those black and white ones that I have up on the shelf that I never use. I honestly don't ever use them just because I, the only reason I bought them because they're not beetle on. That's I, the only reason I bought them is because they're black and white. And I just like the way they look. I don't ever use them ever, ever. They're good tools, um, but they're not beetle on. So you guys know I'm a little partial, but all right, trim that off. So all that does is just leaves me a little dangle with a little extra because you guys know I got to have the dangles. I don't know why. I'm just, just that kind of girl. Got to have the little extra dangles and, you know, I got to have all that movement with my jewelry. Okay, 
each rib. So now what I have left is my button with some little dangles on it. My button will go right through my little seed bead loop. No hardware needed because we've got all of that. Super, super cute. Definitely a lightweight. If you like cord jewelry this time of year because, you know, everything else seems to be a little bit hot, this is a great one. The project that I'm going to show you guys tonight on Sam's Bead Shop Facebook Live is another cord-based project. I really love cord um, when it comes to hot weather. It just seems to be lighter and, and I sweat less when I wear it. Brooke says she just got out of seeing the new Downton Abbey movie. I'm so jealous. I have to go to that. Like that's one of my top five favorite shows in the history of ever. And I've got to see that movie. Like I got to see it. it just came out today. I think. All right, my friends. So we've gone through five different kits. I'm going to lay them all out here. Well, I'm not going to lay them all out. I'm going to pull them all over here to where we are so we can go through them. So we've got our bracelet. I'm going to turn you guys around. Okay. Hello, my friends. Everybody's going to see it. I don't have anybody to go see it with. And not only that, there's not a movie theater here. <laughs> it's just like, I have to go to town. I have to go to like, I have to go to city. I have to go to the city to see it. This little city does not have a movie theater. So here's our bracelet, just so you can see it from a different point of view, right? It's not a movie Q would go to. <laughs> You're like, um, what? <laughs> I'm have to beg Kathy. <laughs> I don't think I have to beg her. But, all right. So I'm fixing the necklace so you can see the necklace on the bust the um the desert one i want to see the new jurassic park movie too there's there's a lot of movies. that one q would go to see so here's our southwestern necklace with our tiara cast pendant the tiara cast spacer beads on it super super pretty all right let's take a look at our cherry necklace So I'm just going to double the chain on this one instead of fighting with it on the bust. So just know that when you're looking at it, you're looking at the chain doubled up. It's not the way you don't have to put it together this way. All right. So there's our little cherries necklace. Again, the chain is doubled. Oof. Okay. And then last but not least, we had two really cute pairs of earrings. So we had our our little purple. I don't mind to go to the movies alone, honestly, um, but I, I enjoy it better if I go with a friend. So there's our little purple check glass clusters. Super cute. And then we have our Tierra cast snakes in copper or in, whoa, antique silver. And these are super cute as well. The copper disappears in my hair, so the silver is probably the better choice for me. But they both look awesome. Uh, Wanda says, same. I smuggle in my popcorn and go to the first show by myself for movies I really want to see. That's the way to do it. I don't want to smuggle in my popcorn, though, because I want, like, real movie theater popcorn. Because it's totally different than, like, home popcorn. Aren't those cute? Okay. <laughs> Big bring tissues. No. So the last Downton Abbey movie, I was so happy that it wasn't sad. Like I was so afraid that at the end I was going to be bawling and it ended up, it ended with a happy ending. And that's like, and now I know that you're going to cry in this one. Like if I know in advance, I'm going to cry. I might just have to wait till it comes out on video. Cause this girl doesn't cry in a movie theater. Like I don't, I'm not, you can ask my girls. They know. Colleen and Kathy and Nicole, Nicole all know there are movies that I have not watched. Like I haven't even seen Titanic. And that came out a million years ago. One of the best movies ever. Nope. I don't wa haven't watched it. I will not watch it because I know that you cry. Like I'm never going to intentionally put myself into a position where I'm going to cry. Now, if it happens accidentally, that's totally different. But I'm not willingly going in. <laughs> Being like, I'm going to cry in this movie. <laughs> nope. Darn. 
No, I'll I'll watch it by myself and cry by myself. Maybe I'll still fight it. Like my mascara is expensive. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just don't like to cry. I don't like to cry. When I cry, it makes me mad. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Even the Jurassic Park movie made you cry? Come on. I can't take it. I can't take it. <laughs> this is why all of the movies that I like are thrillers, horror movies, <laughs> mysteries, suspense, a little bit of comedy here and there, but like, I'm not willingly going to put myself into a crying movie. Peanut M&Ms and a bottle of water in your Mickey Mouse tote. That's the way to go, Wanda. I'm telling you. All right, my loves. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm going to let you go because we're 16 minutes over. I apologize, but thank you all for hanging out with me today. It is always a blast. It's my favorite way to finish my week. Thank you so, so much. Brooke says, I feel if I cry, I've gotten my money's worth. Girl, I'm not paying to cry. <laughs> got enough to cry about in my real life. Like, I don't want to pay for that experience. I know what you mean though. And I, I know I'm not, I'm not the norm. Most people don't mind it. I, on the other hand, I'm like, you're not getting any tears out of me. <laughs> you have to pay me. <laughs> all right. All right. So you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Don't forget later on hardwired group at 4 PM. We've got our special guest, Danielle Wicks is with us. She'll be in the house. Uh, we're having a little seed bead party. And then at 7 o'clock Eastern time, I'll be over on Sam's Bead Shop putting together a really cool bracelet and earring set that is cord-based. Very, very similar to what we did here today with the bracelet that we just finished. Uh, all of the kits you can grab over in my Etsy shop unless some of them have already sold out. Don't forget the maker mixes are 40% off today through Monday. Uh, don't sleep on those. If you want one, get it now because they're going to be gone. 40% off is huge. I never, ever do 40% off, but I got to get those moved. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. You guys don't forget tomorrow. I've got a Michael's class as well. Oh, I'm so busy. I will see you guys back here on Tuesday next week and Sam will be in the house. So that's going to be a fun one as well. All right. Bye guys. I love you.